Hi internet, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Yudi on YT. My YouTube channel is literally about whatever I want to talk about. Sometimes it's just about me, myself, and my life, and sometimes it's about other people. Obviously today we're talking about other people. We're going to be reacting to this Fresh and Fit episode. We're reacting to this lovely creator here. Her name is Bose. Um, because this podcast is too cringe for me to watch by myself. So disclaimer, this channel is vibes. If you vibe, subscribe. If you don't, you know, then don't. And you don't need to announce it. You know, you don't need to announce that you don't vibe. You can just like, you know, find your own vibrations elsewhere. But um, this is the kind of topic that sometimes it attracts undesirable viewers so I will say I consider myself a feminist so you're getting this type of perspective I consider myself a feminist because I don't care um I don't care for enforcing gender roles and I've been a feminist since I was a child read my history book there's a chapter about women's suffrage. I saw the term feminist movement. I was like, that sounds litty. I went to the library and read books. And I was like, yo, I totally understand. Like, it's ridiculous that at seven years old, that is, that is how much gender norms are enforced at by seven years old. Was I seven or eight? By eight years old, I have, I felt like I've already experienced the gender divide. <laughs> and I just thought that's so dumb. You can imagine being eight, being like, I want to play tag football. Oh my gosh. Now I understand why the teachers won't let me play. You can, like, you get it? Like, very easy to see how an eight year old can feel like she, you know, I need to be a feminist. But the sentiment never left me. Um, so I just like, yeah, I just continued. Now, these guys and the people who watch it, their podcast, Fresh and Fit, um, feminist is like a dirty word. <laughs> dirty, dirty word. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. They hate that word. Um, it Obviously, it means something different to them than it means to me. But I put that disclaimer because, you know, who knows? I, don't, I never know who... Or how many people are going to see my videos. But I just know from past experience that when I comment on stuff like this, it attracts a certain crowd. Um, that type of crowd also would like to know whether or not I'm single. I am not single. And I am in a very heteronormative relationship. Um, some of you who are like normal people would be like, why does that matter? Trust me, to these type of people, it matters, especially if you're a woman. If you're a dude, it doesn't matter if you're single or not. But if you're a woman and you're talking about these kind of things, you better not be single. If you're single, it completely devoids everything you're saying. Let's react to this. Um, this might be a long one because I have a lot to say. I have a lot to say. I girls continue. Also, I'm going to speed it up just so it's not long. I hope you can follow along. Um, somebody was like, when you speed it up, it's just not natural. That's fine. <laughs> I don't know. That's fine. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Would you prefer that the video be way longer, but we're reacting to something at normal speed? If you would prefer that, then I might consider doing that moving forward. The, the person was also like, maybe you should like chop up your video into smaller parts. I don't edit my videos. If anybody wants to volunteer to edit my videos, be my guest. They fail to understand their roles. This is a really interesting title to me because titles are really important. You want to bring in the most amount of people possible, right? And so with this title, Why Girls Continually Fail to Understand Their Roles, they're bringing in two completely separate audiences. They're mm. bringing in the incels that are like, yeah, yeah, why, do, why these bitches don't know what to do? And then they're also bringing in the women that are saying like, excuse me, what did you just say? So it's a, I mean, th this title is essentially clickbait. <laughs> Let's be real. Why are right. men so... So, yeah. Why girls struggle to uh, to stay in their role. 
which obviously I just explained to you why I consider myself a feminist. So when I hear role, my role, a girl's role, that makes me feel like, what exactly is my role, sir? <laughs> intimidated by the idea of coming home to an uh, independent woman. <laughs> We're not intimidated. Let me slow it down a little bit. So she starts out saying, why are men intimidated by the idea of coming home to an independent woman? This could actually have been a very good discussion. If this was like a real discussion, it could have been good. These guys could have explained how, um, how they believe men are not intimidated to come home to an independent woman. They just want to be in a relationship with somebody. They don't want a relationship with somebody who is independent. They want to be in a relationship with like, this could be a really great discussion. You will hear that it's going to be a very dumb discussion where this guy, I don't know who the guy is, the guy in the light shirt, the light colored shirt. I don't know who he is. I know the host, the one in the black shirt and the one with the jacket um, they are single, right? Like I mentioned before, it's weird that these single guys can have these podcasts where they feel like they are experts in relationships, but they're single. And the one in the blue shirt, the blue jacket has expressed how he plans to never be in, in a monogamous relationship. But it, it just doesn't make sense to me. But anyway, the guy in the light shirt is going to talk. He's going to talk out of his wazoo. And it's unfortunate because this actually could have been a great discussion. I would headache. think that an independent woman, like independence is an attractive quality. No. How would you define independence? Okay. Um, you know, she's, about to, she's about to roast him about why are you asking how would you define independence like it's a dumb question to ask it. The fact that he's asking, how would you define independence? It lets you know right away that he's, he's not um, looking for a discussion. He's trying to get you to say things so that he can corner you and roast you with it. But let me just say to that woman, she said, I would think independence is an, is an attractive quality to men. Um, I don't want to say it's not, it's not to, I'm telling you from my perspective, you being independent and I'm telling you from the perspective of somebody who's not triggered by the word independent and woman being in the same sentence. These are the kind of guys that they don't want to hear that. It, it upsets them for some reason. It's a trigger for them. And so I can't, can't relate, but as a regular person, I'll tell you, an independent woman is not more attractive to guys. It's just nor it's just the normal. It's the bare minimum. You're an adult. You should be independent. It's not it's not extra attractive. Um. Yeah, there it's it doesn't make you more attractive. It's just like normal. <laughs> it's just like yeah, you you're an adult. You should be independent says we're not intimidated it's i would a think that an independent woman like independence is an attractive quality no how would you define no. independence he um i mean in simple terms a woman who doesn't need a man wait one i have to, I'm, ah! <laughs> one in the chat if somebody said to you oh yeah amy she's really independent one in the chat if you know exactly what that means two in the chat if you would need some more clarity that no if somebody said amy is really independent that makes me think, first of all, I want to know how old she is because when people say that about kids, it makes me think, wow, you're a really responsible kid. Now I know, hmm, was there trauma there? What made you feel that you needed to be so responsible at such a young age? Side note. But, you know, if it's a kid, I'm thinking, oh, wow, she, she's, she must be sharp. She must be with it. She can take care of herself. She can, you know, make her own lunch after school and she does her homework and she helps give her siblings a bath. And that's what I'm thinking. If it's a kid, if it's a, like an older person, I'm just thinking, oh, she does what she wants. She, she can, she could backpack through Europe all by herself. She doesn't care. She doesn't, she, if she wants to go out to this restaurant and nobody's free to go with her, she'll go by herself. 
um, you know, she, you know, she has her own life. She's happy, like in her own solitude. She doesn't feel the need to be in a clique or, or a gang or like, you know, she probably like has really close friends that like are really close. She, she's not like just in everybody's business. She doesn't have to be attached to anyone or be associated with anyone. That's what comes to my mind. Destiny's Child did a song about this. We know exactly what an independent person is. I'm this is somebody making they make their own money. Maybe they, they're comfortable going out to dinner or going to a movie by themselves. Right. They can sit in a room by themselves for a while and be okay. They're highly mm -hmm. individualistic people. I, like, I don't know. I don't need to explain to you what an independent person or woman is. So what this is, is just a bait for a point of contention. It's like, right. let me get you to say as much as possible about the thing that I don't agree with. And I'm getting ready to rip you to shreds. That's exactly what's going? happening. I mean, in simple terms, a woman who doesn't need a man, but wants a man and okay. wants to be a, also, I mean, I can provide in, in my own ways and the man will provide in his own ways. However, that dynamic works, it'll work. That's okay, so. You said um, yeah, that's how I feel about relationships, too. This guy is going to have a problem with it. And I'm just going to say right now, I want you to pay attention to his tone as the conversation goes on. Um, just just notice, just notice, just notice his tone. Just notice it as, the, as it goes on, as we get closer to the end. A woman who doesn't need a man, but wants a man. <laughs> Why is that confusing? I don't understand that. Like, I have a friend, he watches this kind of stuff. I don't understand why. He's already married. He's married with a child. I'm like, why are you watching this? Why are you watching this stuff? But anyway, he, he kind of gave me that once. He was like, who needs who more? You know, talking about me and my partner. Who needs who more? And I was like, huh? Yeah, who needs the other more? And I was like, no one. We don't need. What do you mean by need? Like, huh? I was just so confused. You shouldn't need another adult. Like, obviously, as a human being, you need human interaction. But, like, you, there isn't just one person that you need. What do you mean? He'll tell us what he means because he literally he literally <laughs> believes that a woman should need a man. Ah. Oh, he's thinking real fast when she says something about why is a man intimidated. But now when he's got to repeat it back to her, it's like, so you said what he's really thinking is like, what's the next hook? What's the next ar next argument he's going to build on? I can always yeah, he's trying to construct something to try to tear her down you'll hear it later on I guarantee you i'm, I'm a, dude i haven't even seen the video i feel like whatever he's gonna say next is just gonna be something to provoke her or that is clearly the complete opposite of her opinion i mean is that just the point of the show it's still pretty cringe bro what do you mean by like i'm trying to understand what do you mean by not, not I, mean, I mean i mean i'm not a child i don't i don't need a parent okay i'm gonna stop soon i'm gonna let it play through i'm trying to understand what do you mean i don't understand why you are such a idiot and don't understand what an independent person is when somebody says, I don't understand, when you make a simple yes. statement, th 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 it makes you doubt your words. As though Yo, that's one of my pet peeves. If you saw, um, I, I have this podcast with a friend called That 5%, and we reacted to Jamie Lynn Spears. If you know about the Jamie Lynn Spears drama, then you know exactly what I mean when I say her favorite phrases. I don't understand. I don't understand. And that's one of my pet peeves. That's one of my pet peeves. I don't understand. When we're discussing something that's very basic and you say, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't even let my students, back when I used to teach or in tutor, a kid would be like, I don't understand. Like they'll be doing a math problem and they'd be like, I don't know. I don't know the answer. And I'd be like, stop, pause, calm down, take a deep breath. Okay. You do know. You do know. Let's work it out. I don't I feel like I don't understand this like I don't know there's some, some there's somebody who's gonna be like, You're so mean. Sometimes people just don't comprehend something. Duh. But for those of you who vibe, you get the vibe. 
sometimes when you say, I don't understand, you are blocking, you don't want to understand. You are blocking the understanding. Intentionally. And that's why it's a pet peeve of mine, okay? When Jamie Lynn Spears says, I don't understand, why would Britney stay in the conservatorship? Like, why wouldn't she just leave the state? You are intentionally blocking the understanding that everybody else knows that Britney Spears couldn't leave the state. And even if she could, the conservatorship would still be valid in the states that she would go to. For those of you who don't know the drama, you're just like, huh? <laughs> Let's keep going. Oh, you have to explain a simple statement. I don't right. Know, I just went to, to raise me to his level. Just like I feel like like a, a well, just, if, if I'm younger than herself. him, for example, I want him to strive to, to raise me to his level. Just like I feel like like a, a top tier men are are drawn to people who they want to be their peers eventually. They like. So I'm just going to interject a few things that <laughs> what I think men think. And you can let me know your thoughts in the comments. Um, she says she thinks a high value men want to be around people who are striving to be at their level. They do. They want to be with people who are, first of all, at their level, right? When you are, when you have a certain income, it is stressful to have friends who do not make that same type of income because it's just awkward. It's like, <laughs> It's like, you know, this viral TikTok trend where people are like, you know, are you the friend that just wh when you go out to eat with your friends, you just split the check evenly or you're you're trying to figure out who ordered what? Which friend are you? Right. Because the rich people want to. Well, rich people don't even want to split the check. Somebody's just going to pay for it. Like there's going to be one person who pays for it. Um, but. Uh, with the expectation that next time we go out, somebody else is going to pay for it. Um, but it's just stressful because it's like that. Like there are people who make enough money that they can split the bill evenly. They came to fully enjoy. They don't care that you ordered something that was $60 and they ordered something that was $45. Like they don't, that's fine that's fine. You know what I mean? But if you're not wealthy, if you're not, you know, financially well off, you care. Like that's a big deal. That's a big deal because that's extra money that you would have used to pay for gas on the way home <laughs> or, you know, to pay your Netflix bill or whatever. So when you have money, it's stressful. It's stressful to be, to have fun and hang out and spend money with people who don't have money. So you do want people who are at your level, but also you admire people who are fighting to be at your level. You admire people that you see something in them. You think they have a good idea. They have a good work ethic. They have a good mindset. You want to be around that because it's fresh. Listen, some people want to steal ideas, whatever. So, so I've heard whatever. I mean, I'm sure they do, but like they like to be around people who they think are going somewhere too. They like to be around that. Did y'all watch Inventing Anna? Okay, that one rich lady, she's like that, right? They're they're actually, look, some of y'all are looking for sugar daddies and sugar babies, and you can do that in a very platonic way. You can get you can get a platonic sugar mama sugar baby, like Inventing Anna. You can. There are people with money who they like to see young people who well, you need to be young, okay? Kind of I mean, you could be older. You can be yeah, you can be older, but you need to you need to be fresh with a fresh idea. And you can find someone who believes in you. Listen, that's what these scammers be doing, girl. These if these scammers are able to find these sugar mommies and daddies to fund them, to fund their scam nothing project. Okay? You just got to look hard, as Anna would say, right? You just need to look hard. But, um, <laughs> anyway, the point I'm trying to make here, before I just go completely on a tangent, is I don't think they will care about that in their romantic relationships, right? Like, if I'm friends with high value people, um, they, they would expect me to be at their income level or they admire me because 
not I don't know if admire is the right word, but they are letting me hang because they are seeing themselves as my mentor and they think I will get at their level, which will pay them back in dividends in some way, shape, form, or fashion. If they were romantically interested in me, they don't they don't care. They don't care. Right. And I know the sugar daddies say, I'm looking for a woman, I'm looking for a young woman with some a good head on her shoulders who's trying to get somewhere. They just want to feel like they're contributing to your success. They just want to feel like they just, they want to have a reason to sugar daddy you. Like they don't actually care. (laughs) They don't actually care if you're going to make it to their level. They just want to feel like there's a reason to sugar daddy you other than you look good. You know what I mean? My partner is kind of like that, which my friend kind of can't believe. My, my friend he listens to this kind of stuff. I don't know why. He's already married. He's already married. But he listens to this kind of stuff. And he wants me to be a trophy wife. Like he was really trying to talk me into it. And I'm like, dude, it's not up to me. <laughs> it's up to my partner if that's what he wants. And that's not what he wants. When we first got together and got serious, it was pretty clear that's not what he wants. Um... And obviously, I don't have a problem with that because I'm with him. (laughs) But my partner is like that. He, he, he would love for me to be successful. It's not a requirement. But what is a requirement is that I'm trying, is that I'm doing something, is that I'm living my passions. I'm, I'm contributing something to society, to the world that I'm expressing myself, that I'm doing something that nobody else can just do, right? Like sharing who you are on the inside. You can't just pay someone else to do that, right? He can pay a maid to come. He can pay a decorator to come fix the home and make it all pretty, but you can't pay someone to replace me. Does that make sense? So he, he likes that. He likes to see that you are a human being who gives a damn about something. That's what these guys want to see. They don't literally care if you make it big or whatever. I mean, obviously they will support you. They will think, oh my gosh, that's great, honey. Oh my gosh, they'll be excited with you. But it's not like, they're not like, if you don't, if you don't make 200, if you don't make at least a quarter mil by next quarter, I'm leaving you. It's not like that. Like lifting people up and i think that in a relationship it should be the same well i think for me um i think you're viewing it the like as a woman i no think it's duh, hard dude to... she is a woman <laughs> and you know what's funny he says i think you're viewing us as a woman i'm going to point out where we're later on he's viewing things like a man since 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 it matters he doesn't consider that he's sometimes he's viewing things like a man and he's not comprehending. You'll see. I'll, 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 point it out. I'll show you that. I think you're thinking about this like a woman. I need you to think like a man. I need you to think like me. Just for a second. Like right. Think like a man and then come back to me. All right. I'm going to stand. <laughs> Let's say you made $200,000 a year, right? And your man made $50,000 a year. You would eventually want him to get there. No, Is that that's fair to not say, true. Absolutely. And, and if he was. I wouldn't. I think a lot of women would. I wouldn't. If I'm making two hundred thousand, and I'm dating someone who makes fifty thousand, I clearly don't give a shit about his income. <laughs> like, first of all, the scenario that you set up implies that I don't care about his money. So, in this scenario, I wouldn't care. I don't. I don't care for him to come up with me. No. In the, if you give me this scenario, I'm making 200000 and I'm dating a 50 grand guy, I don't care. If I am making that money and he's not, I do not care. That man has something that I love and it has nothing to do with his money. And I don't care. I love and respect him regardless of his money. I don't know what it is in this scenario because it's just a scenario. I'm just saying 
If a woman makes that much money and she dates a dude making 50 grand, she doesn't care about his money. I think there is a scenario where there are women who do make more than their husbands and they might care. That is a problem because now you're trying to change somebody. Nobody wants to be changed. Nobody wants to feel like they're inadequate. If people change, it's because they chose to change. Nobody wants to feel like they have an ultimatum ultimatum to change who they are or change their values. People want it to happen on their own accord. So that's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem if you're with somebody that you're not satisfied with who they are. Like you, there's something that you feel is so inadequate and it's not something that they care to change. That's a problem. It was lazy that's and he didn't true. want to get there. He wanted to stay at 50,000. Would that be a turnoff? If he didn't no, you shouldn't be dating the person in the first place. If that's a turnoff. You should like that person for who they are. And look, I believe in personal development, but unless you're going to therapy, the personal development doesn't mean much to me. I like the fact that you're into personal development. My partner admires the fact that all the personal development books, I've read them. I know them. I'm into them. I'm at all the seminars. He loves that. Uh, I love that about him as well. He was, he is also like that. That is something that we mutually love about each other. Wisdom has shown us that it, it doesn't matter. The, the, the fact that you're into it is, is good enough. What comes of it doesn't matter because when you're reading books or in going to seminars, you see what you want to see. You see what you think is the problem. You find the answer that you think is the answer. What actually will help change somebody is therapy because the therapist will bring out things that you want to avoid, that you don't want to look at, that you didn't know you needed to look at. That's the therapist's job. And that is more impressive to me because I know that you are going to change whether you like it or not. If you're in therapy, you're going to see things in you that you didn't know were there and you would never see them by going to a personal development seminar. My point is, again, if somebody's going to change, it's because they're putting in the effort to change and getting help to change or whatever. Sometimes it's just a shift in perspective that gets you to change. Like just something happens. People change because of themselves and what they choose to do or things happen to them. But if you are trying to change someone or expecting a change out of them that they don't agree with, that's a problem. You shouldn't date the broke guy if you didn't like the broke guy. My two want to get better? Yeah, it's not about laziness. It, like, for, here's another example. If I wanted to study something uh -huh. and I knew that I wouldn't be able to work for the next eight years, medical school, for example, uh -huh. then uh, if, if my man is willing to support me, I want him to eventually be happy with my success. Yeah. So let me, let me, let me finish my example. That I want to answer your question. Oh so God. the point is, is that you guys. Why are they? So, oh, look at, look at him. Yo, like, no, skip Nobody. him. I don't like that guy. That's another host of the show. He never says anything. It's just weird to me. It's weird to me that you're the host of the show and you never say anything. You never take control. You never have your own opinion. He's constantly always looking to the other men in the room for what his opinion should be. Um, like I've seen how the, the, the talking gets out of control. He can't handle it. Like he can't, con like, I don't know. I, I just feel like, what are you here for? You let me not, let me not, let me leave him alone. I'll leave him alone. I'll leave him alone. I'll leave him alone. Let's leave him alone. Let's leave him alone. He's not talking. It's fine. Let's leave him alone. Yeah, dude, she's fucking saying that because she thinks that that's what y'all want to hear. When I was like listening to this the whole time, I was thinking about it and like, I, I've been doing this for a while. I make a good amount of money. I am not going out into this world ever expecting to like, you know, like I, I wouldn't go out here and be like, I want to find a, a guy that makes more money than me because that's what's going to make me respect him. To be fair, sometimes money does make people respect you, but that's not the same for everyone. So your salaries in a relationship, it's not a breaking point or like a, I don't even fucking know. Like that's not everything. Men are this is a warning. This is a red flag to me, this guy, that this guy is very immature. And he's about to he's about to give some some fake guru advice. You're going to hear the fake guru come out of this guy. 
And I don't know. I don't know if he's a life coach. He comes off like a life coach. Um, and he comes off like a snake oil salesman to me when you hear the fake guru stuff come out. But red flag to me that he's immature in his understanding of relationships is how he does seem to put money on a pedestal. I understand this is the Fresh and Fit podcast and their philosophy is that women are attracted to men who make a lot of money. So I understand that's the perspective that they're coming from. But like, okay, that can be the blanket statement, the blanket philosophy. But now you're having a discussion with an individual human being who is telling you what she's looking for in a relationship and you're not listening and you keep talking about money when she not, she doesn't talk about money. And you keep talking about money like that's the end all be all. She says she wants a partnership relationship. When you're looking for a partnership relationship, money is not the only factor. You need to be discussing other important factors Conditions. that I don't think this guy is even aware of. Protect and provide for thousands of years. So there is the, men are not looking for a teammate who can do what they do. It depends on the guy. First of all, it depends on the guy if he's looking for a teammate. And there's something wrong with that. I was looking for a teammate. My partner was looking for a teammate. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with power couples. Number two, a teammate doesn't do what you do. You don't put somebody on the on the on your team because they are a clone of you. You put somebody on the team because they have a quality that you don't have. And you guys work well together. You know how to teamwork to make the dream work that's what a teammate is for and there are plenty of guys who are looking for that of course there are guys who are not I've I've been with guys who are not looking for that okay and I've known men who are not looking for that and I see how they treat their relationships um listen that's not for everybody and that's fine Okay. You know, like, it's like, like the best way I can break it but down. But it's not is... about doing, sorry for interrupting you, yeah. I apologize. But it's not about doing yeah. what they do. It's about doing me and being supported and, and yeah. so here's supported a, here's, emotionally. And... Here's a problem. A man with options can choose. And unfortunately, you're the, the, the worst option. No, no disrespect. No disrespect. <sighs> Watch how he doesn't explain what makes her the worst option. Because here's because here's the reality. There's two guys, right? Mm -hmm. There's a guy that makes 500,000. All, all things are equal. They're both handsome. They're both tall. They're both successful in their own sense right one is a successful teacher making fifty thousand. One is a successful doctor making five hundred thousand. which one is more attractive i'm so sorry i'm so see how mature he is tall handsome successful one makes 500 one makes fifty thousand. and this he is talking to her like she's some high school girl like the high school girl all she needs to know, is he tall, handsome, successful? That's all the high school girl needs to know. That's all the college girl needs to know. This is a one. this, I view this woman as a woman, you know, the kind of things that she's saying, I view her as a woman. And when she says that she's looking for a partnership, she definitely needs to know more information other than tall and handsome. Like I'm that this makes me feel like, dude, you're very immature in how you view relationships or you're immature in how you view women. You generalize women because you probably like to date young women. You probably like to date barely legals, probably. And that's what the barely legals are looking for. They're looking for tall, handsome, successful. This woman is not the kind of woman that you are just going to get with because you're tall and handsome. <laughs> She's not looking for that. She's looking for a certain type of relationship. You are completely ignoring that to talk about things that are important to your immature target demographic. That's part of why this guy annoys me because when you're looking for a partnership relationship, you need to know what are his triggers? What are his coping mechanisms? <laughs> 
What is his past history like? What's his, what are his relationships like? What are his goals and dreams? That stuff matters way more. That stuff matters more than the income. But of course, on paper, if it's the exact same guy and he's perfect for me, look, I'm humoring him. I will pick the guy who makes more money like everybody would. Sorry, I blinked out a second ago. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> Yeah, because we're still trying to wrap our heads around why is she the worst choice. <laughs> That's actually really fucking funny. That is a great response to that. That that was almost the equivalent of, I don't understand. <laughs> there's two, there's, there's two guys and everything Stupid. is equal, okay? <laughs> one of them makes one of them makes 50,000, uh -huh. one of them makes 500,000. Mm -hmm. Which one is more attractive? Everything is equal. It's okay to say the truth. I know. <laughs> it's okay. I find... <laughs> listen, uh, listen. The feminism Obviously... in her won't allow it. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> She's going an equal partner. I think that's uh, mesmerized by fancy shiny things as any other person is. I find that sometimes men who have a lot no, no, no. come entitled. No, listen, no, listen, no, listen. No. I just said everything equal. was equal. Okay, then, then yeah, for sure the man has more. Because... Yeah, it depends on the guys. Some guys do become entitled. Like, they feel like they work so hard to get what they have and they feel entitled and some guys are just chill some guys are really chill some rich guys are very chill um she'll say later on that she's trying to get into like these higher echelon circles i really hope i don't know your name girly you're probably never going to see this but i really hope the best for you i hope you get into those circles so you can see that um wealthy people are not just a stereotype you know, I hope you get into those circles so you can meet different types of people like there in every type of circle. There's different types of people. You know what I mean? And I hope that you get into the circle so you can familiarize yourself with that and, you know, like feel like you're in your domain, you know, and live whatever type of life that you're trying to live. Life would be better. Because you value that more. So what you got to understand is women. This is an echo chamber. Everybody values money. We live in a capitalistic society. Everyone values money. Like if you have the option of 50 grand or 500 grand, everyone will pick 500 grand. Except the people who are paranoid that their family's going to murder them over the money. <laughs> That's all this is. How disgusting. This is, this is an echo chamber of a single line of thinking. The, all of the cast members, which are the men, are reinforcing either by not. In order the girl to be on the show, I need to get. And they all laugh, or you know, earlier we saw get this guy over here nodding speech. when the person said <gasps> something. And I don't understand why these so cool. women have agreed to be here and be exploited by these men, knowing that this is their tactic. They invite you into their echo chamber and then make fun of you. You like right? Um, like Asian doll was on the show, and you know. Our response uh, as black women, first of all, I don't like Asian doll. I don't like her name. I don't like the logic behind her name. And I don't like that she's transphobic. I don't like her. But anyway, um, people were like trying to see if black women would be upset by it and this and that. And it's like, what do you want us to say? These women chose to be on the show. They chose to be on the show. And when Asian doll walked out, no other woman walked out with her. So there was no like there was no female solidarity. You know what I mean? Like it, it, they, everybody was there with their own motives. Everybody was there with their own motives. So these people are individually choosing on their own accord to be on the show and, and do whatever they're doing with these people. And that's that's on them. What do you want us to say about it? Like, I don't know. Like, you want us to speak for all women? I don't know why these women would be on the show. I don't know. They, we know because of Fresh and Fit's history, because of DMs that leaked, that there's ulterior motives. Everybody at this table has some kind of ulterior motive. We don't know what it is. It's not our business, and uh, we don't care. But, yeah, these people are on the show, and they want to be. Like that in men. Yeah. A man being independent. A man not needing you. A man to be able to take care of his stuff on his own. That's what you value in men. Men don't men don't want that in women. For because the reality of the matter is when a woman is really turned on by a man. This part is gonna gross me out. Listen. When a woman is really in love with a man, when she really respects him, she becomes utterly dependent upon him because she does not want him to leave. <sighs> really in love with a man when she really respects him she becomes utterly dependent upon him because she does not want him to leave really in love with a man when she really respects him she becomes utterly dependent upon him because she does not want him to leave that's disgusting there's something wrong 
at this point, I was already sus of him because I felt like his view of relationships is immature. But when he said this, that when a, he thinks of when a woman's in love with a man, she becomes utterly dependent on him. That is bad. That is codependency. That is not healthy. And if you see that, you need that person should go to therapy. That's not healthy. The fact that he thinks that's normal, the fact that his signal that a woman is in love with a man is that she is depending on him for everything. What, hap what happened to you? What did you see? What did you see? Why do you think that's normal? Why do you think that's uh, good? What happened? And he adds, because he, she doesn't, does not want him to leave. I don't, I don't understand now. How is being desperately dependent on someone? Someone is going to say, he didn't say that. He said utterly dependent. Don't play dumb with me. Don't play dumb. If you're utterly dependent on someone, you're desperately dependent on them. You are solely dependent on them. What other synonyms can we throw? I don't understand how does that make you more attractive to a man? Like what? Like I don't I don't think I don't buy that. I don't I don't believe that a man will see that a woman is completely dependent on him. So he's like, "Well, oh, I want to leave, but she's completely dependent on me. I can't leave." That doesn't no. That doesn't happen like dudes. I watched 30 John. I watched 30 John season 2. I watched that about Betty. <laughs> What y'all know? What y'all know about that Netflix true crime? Know what I'm saying? Anyway. That's what I don't like. My, my biggest fear is to lose my independence and to rely on somebody else. And know where that comes from? Uh, where does know. that come from? You don't this is annoying. It's where he, she's going to say his body language here is that he's going to, he's going to learn her today uh why what would her psychoanalysis of why she's afraid of 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 being left with nothing watch it doesn't matter where it comes from listen let's let's just skip to him let's just skip to his rebuttal let's just skip to his dumb rebuttal i i don't know i don't want to rely on anyone i fear you can't leave. Okay, showed you or somebody communicated that to you because you're, you're talking about i have a fear you can't live your life according to fear oh, imagine me saying God. i have a fear here comes the bullshit guru stuff. Here we go. A crash on a plane. I can never get on a plane. Damn. So your whole relationship movement is based upon a fear. Dude. That's unhealthy. Life coach 101. You can't live your life in fear. You need to manifest, babe. This, you so know what? This guy that's talking actually has elements <laughs> of almost going in the right direction. And then it's like his bias just takes him right back here. And, and his cockiness and his confidence is like, this is just like a bad, it's not even confidence, it's just cockiness. It's just a battle, you know? I almost feel like this person has the tools to properly communicate, but they're putting on a show and just trying to push somebody into a corner and perpetuating a really, really nasty stereotype. I thought we got out of this. So what I've noticed is a lot of women, when they move in a relationship, it's based out of fear. You can't live your life based upon fear. I think. So now I say, you know, earlier he said she's thinking like a woman. Now I say you're thinking like a man. Because I was telling my my partner about some something that I was like, oh, babe, we should. Anyway, we were having this discussion and he was like, babe, you're thinking like a woman. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, you, you women think about, you know, oh, is somebody following me or I need to protect myself. You women think about that. Men don't think about that. And I'm like, what do, why don't men think about it? You should. Like, you know that the, ma the majority of people who get mugged are men. Like, men are the majority of victims of muggings and this and that. Like, well, you don't think about defending yourself and, and keeping yourself safe? He's like, no, we don't think about that. I mean, you're right. Like, you're right. The statistics show what the statistics show, but men don't think about that. But I guess women do. I'm like, yeah, we do. We think about that all the time. And this, we, let's listen, in the comments section, we can get into the nuance of why that is. I think society is telling men that they should be able to handle anything and everything, hence, uh, they try to live their life like they're unafraid 
they're prepared for everything naturally with their natural man bodies and women are conditioned otherwise whatever i don't know that's my theory that's my loose theory off top of my head okay if you want to discuss it more leave a comment but um this guy doesn't understand that he thinks that this woman is living in fear actually she's living the way every woman lives every woman is considering the danger of a guy before she gets with the guy we consider it we think about it yeah i guess guys do not you should like you should like dudes you should men i'm so sorry that you feel like you don't need to you should and when i have a son if i have a son i would very much teach him i would very much teach him that okay um but i guess guys don't obviously this guy doesn't um but women do before we get with any guy we consider does this guy seem like a serial killer yes that's how women think you wouldn't know that because you refuse to listen to women and you don't care it's unhealthy to put yourself in situations where you could potentially be left with nothing. But, but that's and that's the mindset. That's the fear. You see where you see how you're living your life. They think they think they're so deep. That's the fear. You think you're so deep? Yes, that is the fear. You every woman has that fear. You should have that fear. What is wrong with having that fear? Okay, explain to us. Tell us what we're missing out on because we live our life in fear. You know, like I wear my seatbelt because I'm living my life in fear. Oh my god. You're living your life worst case scenario thinking. Wow. Imagine me saying, I don't want to start a business because if I open a business, I can lose all my money. Because that's No. The correct analogy would be I want to start a business, but I need to make sure that I don't lose all my money if my business fails. That would be the correct analogy. And that would be a good way to think about business. Anybody who starts a business without considering the risks is somebody who should not be in business. If you start a business without considering the risks and setting up safety guards, you shouldn't be in business. You're not a good business person. So I guess this guy is not a good business person. He gives off fake guru vibes. So not surprising. That's a risk of starting a business. You can put all your time, energy, effort, and money and resources into a business and lose it all. This is why you put safety guards, you save your money, you get lawyer consulting, accountant consulting, like you educate yourself in the event that your business fails, you're not having to file for bankruptcy. That is good business sense. But to this guy that's living in fear, which you should never do. Dude, fucking podcast host gaslights me out of my feelings for 15 minutes straight. <laughs> podcast host gets to the root of my deepest fears. <laughs> you can look it up right now. We have all the data. What is he Women about? divorce men at higher rates than men divorce women. 70 to 80 percent of divorces are initiated by women. We have Google right now. We can go ahead and pull it up. So the reality of women what being left by men is a misnomer. It is it is feminine I'm mythology. Not talking about no. This is how we know you don't listen. She didn't say she's afraid of a man leaving her. You don't listen, dude. This is something I've just noticed with, with men who who debate his talking points. They don't listen. Oh my God, you don't listen. This is another pet peeve of mine. When people don't listen, that's a pet peeve of mine. You don't listen. She didn't say she's afraid of a man leaving her. First of all, first of all, the myth, a feminist myth that men leave women, that is not, we don't give a damn about that in feminism. <clears throat> first of all, it's it's a myth you made up in your head. Second of all, it's not a myth if it still happens. The other 30% of divorces were then initiated by men. So I don't know. I mean, 30% is not nothing. 30% <laughs> is not nothing. It still occurs. This is another pet peeve of mine. When people behave like a statistic is the end all be all. 
This statistic says 75% of blah, blah, blah. So the other 25% doesn't exist. Like that's how they act. That's how they talk. They speak and act like this statistic is the end all be all. And it said the majority of something is, is X amount. So all the other percents don't matter. Don't exist. That's what you're implying. When you say men leaving women is a myth, you're implying that it doesn't happen, that it happens very rarely. 30% is not rare. 30% is not rare. 30% is still a good chunk, first of all. But second of all, if you listen to her, what she said is she's afraid of, of losing, not having anything left, okay? Okay. That's what she's afraid of or being afraid to leave if she needs to leave. Meaning the statistic you just spouted out about which gender uh, files for divorce doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if she files for divorce or the guy files for divorce. You either way, you can be left with nothing because it's a divorce. You divorce is messy and you lose your stuff. You lose your stuff. You're fighting to keep your stuff. And that's divorce. She's not even talking about getting married. She's just talking about a relationship. Not even that deep yet. I, I, my, my concern is not being left Dude, by a man. I love that this woman is like really standing her ground because what this guy over here in this shirt is essentially doing is he starts off by making her question herself and then he hits her with the, I'm going to tell you why you're wrong. And then he hits her with the, I'm going to guide you in the right direction. This is like yeah, a using my statistics. Facts don't care about your feelings. Almost a form of like manipulation that paints the aggressor as a savior. Where in the end, if she had taken the bait about that's a fear, that's a fear. Then he could have gone off on a tangent of how she can fix herself. Hence why he's already, girl, he's already on the tangent. The tangent has left the, the train station. Looking for submissive women that they can control because they want to be the savior. Yeah, he probably is looking for somebody young and dumb that he can tell what to do and mentor. Mentor. My concern is jumping head on into a relationship where I'm feeling like I'm being supported and helped. Eventually losing my independence because I'm relying on him. I don't need to work. If what is right. So, dude, if you shut up and calm down, you would hear that she is looking for a partner. She's looking for somebody who also will support her. Um, in her endeavors and she's afraid that if she meets that person who gives her that she meets a guy who will support her she's afraid that she will lose herself in that that she will become dependent and reliant on that support that is her fear and if she becomes dependent and reliant on another human being, if something happens to that human being, he breaks up with her. She breaks up with him. He passes away. He's chronically ill. If something happens to the person she's depending on, she will be left on her ass. That is her fear. You don't give a damn. You don't want to talk about that. You want to talk about some BS. Let's listen to the BS you want to talk about. What, what does that mean? So I'm, I'm, I'm explaining. Wait, I'm afraid. You're still confused? If you listened, you wouldn't be confused. What did you say a second ago? What I said is that <laughs> you're, 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 you're Listen, and what's funny is that uh, Redhead doesn't get that she's throwing back his energy back at him. She is throwing his exact energy back at him. He's like, what do you mean? What do you mean you're afraid of losing your independence? What did you say again? She's throwing it back at him. But uh, you think this is just a key key. Fear. Like, you think this is a rose, but y'all, this is embarrassing. All right, hold on. Wait, what? Who, who, okay, look, this dumb bitch right here. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is the pick me girl in the room. I, look, there was something that happened in the beginning of this video that she did, and I was like, that might be the pick me. Hey, pick, yeah. she's not shit. Situation where I can't leave. Okay, That's so that fear. My fear is that I won't be able to leave because I'll be put in a situation where I can't leave. Okay. That's so that fear is based upon a... And that's a fair fear. That's That happens to a lot of people. Maybe it happened to somebody close to her. That's, a, that's not an irrational fear. Worst case scenario. 
you're you're living your life on a worst case scenario if you take that she's not living her life dude you're so dramatic she's not living her life on a worst case scenario she has a a standard for relationships to to prevent a worst case scenario like why is he so dramatic these the guys are very dramatic um because they feel like no we're changing i kid you not my friend who's into this kind of stuff like he's like no like the black do have you seen the black statistics have you seen our our marriage rates and you know the percent of us who have children out of wedlock and these podcasts are going to change those statistics no they're not <laughs> these podcasts might actually make it worse my guy they're so dramatic I don't know. It's like, it's kind and of energy. annoying. Into that. business, you'll never be successful. But if you tell me, let me, let me, let me, let me. No, if she takes that energy into business, she'll be, she will be successful. Now you want to give her business advice. First of all, I thought, I thought it's just so horrible that she's an independent woman. You know, like, why does she need business advice? Why does she, why do you care if she succeeds in her business? She's a woman. She needs to find a man to be utterly dependent on. So why are you giving her business advice, first of all? Second of all, nobody asked. This is not a business podcast. And if it was, you wouldn't be a guest on it because your advice is horrible. You want people to go into business without safeguards or considering risks, which is horrible advice. No, actually, if she went into business knowing that there's something that she is afraid can happen to her business based on her past history, you don't know what she went through. You don't know if she had a prior business endeavor where she made stupid mistakes and she's afraid she would make those stupid mistakes again. What is the smart thing to do is to consider that fear and find ways to prevent that fear from coming true, to start your business with safeguards, to start your business smart. There's nothing wrong with that. How dare you tell her that she's not gonna succeed because she wants to have safeguards. This guy is annoying me finish if you take that energy into finances you never have any money no warren buffett says that the stupidest thing to do with your money is to lose money this guy is the same kind of guy who's gonna get on gary v's d and ride it all the way to the moon on the next nft scam if you take his no fear mentality into finances that's how you get scammed it's funny that this is coming out in the era of NFT scams, Simone Lviv, Tinder Swindler, and Inventing Anna. People get scammed when they take your approach, dude. People who move with caution, you know rich people move with caution. You know that? You know rich people, when they make investments, they know that they're going to lose some money. They expect to lose some money. But they move with caution. They invest what they can afford to lose. Are these rich people who make investments living their life based on fear because they're not investing all of their money on the monkey NFT? I'm bringing up NFTs because that's just an, that's just a hot thing right now. But these people are not dumb because they diversify their like if he was a stockbroker, if he was a financial advisor, would he really tell his clients you're living in fear? Why are you diversifying your accounts? Why are you diversifying your investments? Dude. You know, the last time I talked to somebody who didn't believe in diversifying their investments and they were literally advising people to invest all of their money into this one product, that guy turned out to be a scammer. I knew a scammer in real life. He didn't, actually. If you take that energy into friendship, you'll never have any friends. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that if you're living your life based upon us. And it's just, why is he over dramatizing this? He's, he's taking this very rational concern in relationships and just extrapolating it into all these areas of life that we're not talking about and making it like this huge so thing. Like he can be the life coach and just, just change your mind. Like, what do you want her to say? Oh, you know what? You're so right, dude. I've been living my life in fear. You know what? I've always wanted to jump off a cliff. I think we're going to do it today. Thank you so much.
fearful thing can happen, that's on you. But the wise thing to be is to be like, okay, the that's wise a possibility. Thing. The wise thing. Here's what you're doing, and now here's the wise thing to do. Implying that you, you're not wise. Yo, what in the chat if you would have walked out by now? Chew in the chat if you would have stayed just to see what other bullshit was about to be going on. Kinda I like wouldn't I be out. here in the you first know, place. You know, I'm petty, and I, I like to see what all is going on. But I think I'm a one here, y'all. I would have to leave. And, and I know this is just a show, but you're if you're ever around. No, if I'm on the show, I'm not walking out. I'm not leaving. I'm not walking out. If I'm on the show, I'm on the show. But I don't think I would be on the show in the first place. Around anyone that comes at you with this kind of energy and they're clearly not looking to communicate, they just want to prove why they're right, just walk away. It's the only way that you win because these people will fight you to protect their beliefs, which are tied to their ego at all costs. And you right. will not win. It becomes a battle of the egos. So the best thing to do is just walk away. So how can I, as a woman, find the right kind of man who will support me and help me not make that happen? There's no way possible you're going to find a guy where 100% of the time he will never do anything wrong. He, see how he over-dramatizes? There's no way you're going to find a guy who 100% of the time he will never do anything wrong. She never said she's looking for a guy who will never do anything wrong. You are so dramatic. This guy is so over dramatic. Why do you do this? Why do you do that? Nobody's. What are you talking about? Oh, life is a risk. Go ahead. Thank you so much. Um, number one, I do think that being what is our pick me girl laughing about Look a woman her. in the Look world, you do have to live not in fear. Maybe fear is the wrong word to Look use, but you do have to be very, very conscious and cautious of of all the dangers around you. And relationships can turn dangerous at a certain point. That's the that's number one. I'm this not saying I'm living really out of well. fear. Not at all. Every relationship what, that I've what been in. What does that mean, though? You just said relationship. Why does he keep saying that? <laughs> oh. Dude, he's he's getting on my Jamie Lynn nerves. He's, he's getting on my Jamie Lynn. Turn dangerous at a certain point. You know what's very fascinating about this, what you just shared? Mm -hmm. What do you mean by dangerous? You mean domestic violence? Also. Okay, so let's talk about domestic violence. You know what's fascinating? Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, you know, here's another thing too. This girl. He he thinks he's going to drop some bars right now. He thinks he's going to drop some gems. Couples? I, I mean, okay, so I'm not. Just I, I, domestic violence and lesbian couples are the highest of all couples. I, I, Look at his face. Like, he's like, what do you got to say about that? Who the fuck cares? What the fuck? Who cares? What does that have to do with this discussion? She's not a lesbian. We're not discussing lesbian couples. We're discussing the relationship that she, this person, wants to have with a man. What are you talking about? And what, okay, is high with lesbians okay? Dude, like, I don't know. How do you respond to that? Like, what kind of ex response is he expecting? How do you respond to that? I can't deal. I can't deal. Like, does 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 that? Do you ever see somebody say something so stupid and they're so sure of themselves, and you're just like, okay, I mean, so I'm you not just I, women. Whether it's lesbians or straights or anything, it it doesn't matter. Yeah, Being so, in a relationship where you're relying on are the straights okay? Dude, I love that subreddit. Percent where you're is codependent is unhealthy, in it's my opinion. Codependent, respectfully. Yeah, codependency is not healthy codependent see this is what happens when you create straw mans when you make an she's creating straw mans you said a woman in love with a dude is utterly dependent on him that is codependency that's what you said she didn't create a straw man this is what you said dude you create straw mans you took what she said and turned it into lesbian couples have the most domestic violence dude you this guy is creating straw mans so he you are projecting my guy extreme so on one end of the extreme is codependent he has been talking extremes this whole conversation and he's starting to get heated keep listening to his tone as it goes on tendency where i have nothing without you another end of the extreme really, is where you're probably really at independency i am without <laughs> you but the healthy medium is interdependency is that i could exist without you but i not only want you but i need you so can i say let me finish you just said earlier in this conversation that a, a woman who loves and respects this man, her man, is utterly dependent on him. That is not a healthy medium. So what is this, a backtrack? Is he backtracking? Finish. Because I, I'll be honest with you, right now... Let me finish, because my... You were finished. You were finished. You just don't want to hear her speak. Now he's going to go in on her. Word is so much more important than yours. Yeah, me going in on you is so much more important than 
uh, your rebuttal to the actual content, the actual meat of what I said. You don't want to listen to her. You're he's very upset that she just doesn't she just doesn't buy into his double speak. One minute you need to be utterly dependent, the next minute you need to be interdependent. You don't want to hear anybody question you. The energy that you're on is masculine energy. Uh okay, the energy he's on is very fem feminine. Who gives a damn? I don't understand why this is important. I love her reaction. Listen to her reaction. Finish, because my word is so much more important than yours. The energy that you're on is masculine energy. Oh, God, no. No, why? Because oh, no. you're, you're comfortable. <laughs> this is the problem. You're comfortable. Why is that a problem? Everybody, first of all, discussing energies when we're not speaking about spirituality is very sus to me. I, well, I already see this guy as a snake oil salesman, wannabe guru. Um, but... <laughs> When you, when people are talking about energies and yin yang type of things in this type of context, I'm like, you have no idea what you're talking about at all. And so if she's masculine for disagreeing with you, you're feminine for being upset about it. it d d who cares anyway? This is it's the energy is based on stereotypes. It's based on whatever stereotype that you have in your head. Bull with having to usurp your way. So a lot of times- they Yes, everyone wants to usurp their way when it comes to deciding what type of love relationship that they want. Yes, that's not feminine or masculine. That is no, that's just regular. There's no, when, when, when it is a relationship, when women say they want equality, there's no equality. There's no two kings in one castle. There's no, there's no two presidents in one country. There's no two CEOs in one company. Um, actually there's partnerships. Yeah. You, you can have a business partnership in that case. There is two CEOs to one company, but love and relationship is not a company. It's two human beings who decide that they get along with each other. It's like not the same, it's all but if we're going to make this comparison, um, yeah, totally. You can have two CEOs, you can have a partnership. A registered partnership. Always a leader and somebody submits your leadership. You're str you want to be in charge. And so what happens when there's a board of advisors? Like we just, we just don't know what to do. We, we have a whole board of advisors. We have to like vote. Oh my God. Oh my God. What do we do? We have to make a vote. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> but this guy on Fresh and Fit said that that's not possible. This guy said it's not possible for anything to function without a singular leader. <laughs> I don't. I absolutely don't. I will say my dating style. I love a man who will who will support me, lift me up, help me. But at the same time, I'm not going to relinquish all of my power. She's just repeat. She is so annoying when you have to repeat yourself over and over. Like she feels like you know maybe I just have to say it in a different way. No, hun. The problem is this dude doesn't give a damn about he. The fact that you're not licking his sack right now is the problem. It's not that, you know, you're, girl, you didn't misspeak before. You made complete perfect sense before. The issue is he's not listening because you're not looking his sack. So he's not listening. I understand it. But what I'm saying is that what you're, what you're communicating is, a, is an idea which you feel like you represent. She's communicating what she wants in a relationship. But I'm telling you right now from even communicating with mm -hmm. you from this conversation, talk to hundreds of women, the energy that you have. He's, I'm sorry. The energy that he has is giving upset. I am not one of these people who, like, I don't think you're no longer valid for being upset. I'm not. I'm not one of. These, I'm not one of these people who are like you're mad. <laughs> so everything you said is dumb. I'm not saying that. I just find it ironic that he wants to comment on her energy when her energy is in, very calm, way calmer than his. And I don't, it doesn't make sense to be this worked up simply because somebody wants a relationship that's different than the type of relationship that you want. Something else is at play. Something else is at play. Uh, I don't know this man. I don't know what it is, but there's something there. It's very masculine energy. Oh my God. You can what? say all Dude. that you want, but the idea is you want somebody to join your team. You want somebody to join your program. You want some. Do you? There's nothing wrong with wanting someone to join her team, but you know, the possibility that he can't comprehend is 
uh, people making a brand new team together. You guys feel like this woman over here has insulted him at all? I mean, I'm no, really she trying hasn't. To rack my no, she's been, she has been perfectly calm and per she has been perfectly calm and perfectly respectable this entire time my brain oh. about that because just the incongruency of him throwing jabs directly at right him. and the thing is and he he'll probably argue i wasn't throwing the job it's just the truth she has masculine energy that's not an insult that's probably what he'll say but we know we know in this community telling a woman she has masculine energy is an insult like he i know i just know that i know that if press he would play dumb but that's supposed to be an insult did I mess up my makeup? I don't know, y'all. Oh. Her, like, saying you have you have masculine energy. <laughs> Look, they're both taking a sip versus her. It's just really interesting. And maybe it's because it's his show and she's trying to be respectful, but... Yeah, Someone she's very respectful. I commend her for that. Because a lot of people could, wouldn't be. Wouldn't be able to hold her composure when a guy is, you know, like you visually and audibly getting upset at you for merely stating the type of love that you want to receive. Follow I want to join you. someone's team just the same. I think, I but think that's not how, it, that's not how it works. That is how it, that, that yeah, that t totally can be how it works because that's how it worked for me. That's what I was looking for. That's not how it works. When two come, maybe not for you, you know, it's totally fine that that's how it works for somebody else. Companies were merged. One company joins one company. Now, sometimes the companies, the companies become one brand new company. You know, sometimes a bigger company buys out a little, littler, littler one, and sometimes the two companies merge and they become one. Oh my God! Kind of like marriage. <laughs> kind of like the concept of getting married. Yeah, sometimes they become one brand new company that occurs i feel like he's playing dumb you know partnerships exist you know these mergers ha happen you know a merger and an acquisition can be two different things he knows these concepts right he's the he's the fake business guru who gives bad business advice he knows these things why he's playing dumb i don't comprehend i i don't know why this narrative is so, I guess like Bo said, it's tied to his ego. But why does it need to be tied to your ego? The only thing that would make sense to me is that he's selling some $27 e-course and $399 one-on-one -on -one coaching. That's the only thing that can make logical sense to me unless we can start psychoanalyzing him and he explains to us what happened in childhood or whatever. But two kingdoms merge, one, one king joins one kingdom. And that's fine. But I'm not. Or they become a new. It's a new or it becomes new. Or it becomes new. I'm not going to. Or a partnership. Or a, a temporary. Sometimes kingdoms merge temporarily. Like, they're. <laughs> I'm not going to put my uh, personal well-being in jeopardy. But that, but you're, which is healthy. That's I an think. Extreme. It's healthy. That's Why is it extreme? To but you're, care, you're, to, you're to saying, care about yourself. No, you see, you're making an extreme argument. You're saying that I'm putting my personal well-being in jeopardy. You're not. A lot of women who are in happy, healthy relationships, they're not putting their personal well-being in jeopardy by being with a masculine man and submitting to them happily. They're actually putting their personal well-being at the forefront. Okay, good. Guy, guess what? Before they, they happily submitted to this masculine man. Those happy, healthy women first made sure that the dude wasn't psycho. Like they, they had to make sure of that first. Part of their life, and they're benefiting okay. from it from that masculine man's lead. But in your situation, let me tell you what's going to happen. But why does he take offense to the this idea that there's a woman who doesn't want to submit? Like there are women who are who will not happily submit. Like, what do you want her to fake it? You want her to like submit just for the sake of saying I submit with a fake smile on? What's the point of that? But unfortunately, you're gonna have to find a feminine man who's gonna have to follow you. <laughs> okay. Why is that unfortunate? What's wrong? Okay, if the 
let's say she has to find a feminine man what's wrong with that what what makes that unfortunate have to all right like, dude, no if we're playing that game how do you even handle this situation at this point right you know i always want to like implore you guys to do things with grace and whenever and here's what's so funny to me like when i get in these conversations with these guys they do get heated like this i don't know why i, I sometimes i wonder do they feel like this is an attack on who they are but like when once we get to this point i'm like oh baby i'm not single I, I never talked about my relationship status. I'm not single. <laughs> and then they'll always be like, okay, well, you're an anomaly. Mm, no, I know other, I know other married people who have my type of relationship. I don't know. I, I'm not, in, I'm not in some special community or anything like that. I just, you know, pay attention. I pay attention in life and I notice things. <laughs> but, you know, the only thing that's going to get this guy here is just throwing it back in his ego. If she, like, were to actually hit some, I know she, if it were me, this woman is so respectful. If it were me, I would be like, you're giving real feminine. I think you need to go calm down. You're really emotional right now. You're giving real feminine energy. You know? I mean, like, unfortunately, it takes a masculine energy woman to let you know to to, to help you see <laughs> i don't know i would be so dumb <laughs> something to his core like one or two times he would get real frazzled and get upset he's actually in a very emotional state right now pretty deep in his mind wherever his bias or his ego is or yeah he's like somewhere he's somewhere else he's not in the present moment he needs to like take a breath he whatever is hating breath. women is, he's like almost in a different place right now and just blindly yeah. defending it does that make sense if you mm -hmm. do something to bring him out of that trigger he will come out of it but i, I think the best thing to do is to just walk away what happens of course you don't want that because no woman yeah. does but the, the number one problem is don't why do you say no woman does you just said that she she wants a man to follow her like she but if Based on what she said, you're saying what she wants is a man to follow her. So obviously a woman does want it. This the woman in front of you wants it, right? Oh, you don't want that. The man that you want won't want you. And I'll now be honest, you have, I've never now had, had any of these issues in any relationship in my life. Okay, then why are you still single right now? I would ask him what Um She said she never had any issues in these in her relationships. Um you know you can break up with someone because you just don't like them. Like, there doesn't have to be an issue. I don't know. I don't know. Do I operate differently than other people? I, I've i broken up with people because I just don't like them. Like, that's okay. Like, I thought I liked you, and then I realized I don't like you. Do people not do that? Do people not do that? I mean, I know there's people who don't do that. I've dated guys who don't do that. I've dated guys who, like, they just didn't understand why is there an issue. Like, they just, <laughs> they're just like, we get along. Like, what's the problem? Like, there's, there, I, I thought everything was fine. Yeah, everything's fine. But I'm like, I'm just, I'm just not into you. Just, what, do you think I'm ugly? No, you're not ugly. Well, you don't like me? I mean, not romantically, no. <laughs> so I know there's people who will just find a person who will have them and stay in the relationship until there's a problem. But surely, surely there are, surely you can comprehend just not liking a person. Wait, I've I've broken up with a guy because when we started talking about our goals and our dreams, he wasn't ambitious enough for me. Like I had a great we had some great times. We had really great times. It's because we had so many great times that we were thinking about taking it to the next level and when he told me his hopes and dreams I had no more interest. Like, you know, I don't know. Is that weird? I don't think that's weird. Have you had issues finding a woman that will submit to you because no one respects you? 
I mean, I, I'm I'm seeing a person in my so life. So you're single. <laughs> I don't I don't I really want to share personal this details part. of my life, but I am I am in this a very good place right see, now. Let me be honest with you. This is about to get real annoying. Every time he's like, "Let me be honest with you. Let me be real with you." That's another phrase for "let me be super annoying for a second." Doing yeah. what women try, uh, unfortunately, do when they're in a social setting. You're using. I hate when people do that. This is what women do. What I hate, I hate when they do that. This is actually something that every everybody does, dude. You cannot tell me that you've never spoken to dudes in a social setting and they try to word things in a certain way to be less embarrassing. Dudes do it with other dudes all the time. Dudes big cap. Dudes big cap with other dudes all the time. But you want to say this is what women do. I hate that. That's another peppy. Man, doing these reaction videos really are showing me my pet peeves in life. You're generalizing, but go ahead. You're, what? This well, is this like is the common, seventh or eighth go ahead, go ahead What you're doing is you're using the English language to shape reality instead of to express reality. Yeah, dudes do that all the time. Dudes do it to men and women. Do, do you know how many dudes use the English language to shape a fake reality so they can get in somebody's pants? Dudes do it all the time. Women... Women do it all the time. Human beings do it all the time because humans are social animals. If you're a social animal, you're probably gonna fl you're probably gonna flex a little bit every now and then to try to fit in, to try to get with it in with whoever you want to get in with. You know what I'm saying? Oh you God, see you that doing. you don't want people to look down upon you for being single. I'm not shaming you for being single. Yes, you are. Dude, everything about you is trying to shade her and shame her, dude. You want to shame her for not agreeing with your life philosophy. So therefore, you, all, let me finish. So therefore, oh, you're trying to share. My. Well, I'm not single. I may be single. Da, 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 da. You're single. He was like, excuse you. I'm in the middle of roasting you. I'm not trying to, mind you, I'm not trying to shame you. But how dare you interrupt me dragging your ass right now? So moving forward in this conversation, use English to express reality. And the reality of the matter is, yes, you are single. That's the truth. Okay, can I ask something? Go ahead. I keep losing my train of thought. You're confused because you're because you're talking at me, and then you keep um you keep telling me not to interrupt, and then my train of thought like loses me. So I do apologize. Oh, but that was why good. is it so important that for people to strive to be in a relationship? My priority at the right. Exactly. Being in a rela to these guys, a for a woman, your ultimate goal should be a relationship with a man. That's what these guys think. Um, that's why I'm like, screw you entirely. <laughs> you know, women are human beings. Sometimes a human being needs to be alone. That's fine. The moment. Of course is, it is. But let me just say, you, you preach this to men as well. You say, men, if you want a high value man, work on yourself, be uh -huh. better yourself. Uh -huh. So I'm saying my, my job right now in life uh -huh. is to work on myself, become a better version of myself. I love it. And eventually, hopefully, no, I'll don't. be able to be with a person who will and deserve that. I love Once again, so so my question is, what are, what are three things that you're working on today that's going to make you desirable to the high value man that you want? What are those three things that you're working on today? Social circles. I think that networking is very important. Okay. Another Networking is very important in life in general for your business and to find that high value man she i mean don't get me wrong do, does the this pretty woman happen yeah every now and then you're just on the street and some rich guy sees you and he wants to swoop you up okay can it happen it can happen but if you want to increase your likelihood of getting with a high value man you need to network you need to be in the social circles of those high value men you need to be where they are and you need to be where many of them are you need to know some of them you need to befriend some of them so they can introduce you to their friends do you get what i'm saying proximity is incredibly important when it comes to romance if you are if you're really serious about you know there's a certain type of person you want just get in proximity to them Make friends with some of these people. They'll introduce you to more friends and just keep going. And for this woman, I think that'll be great because she will be able to see that, you know, it's not it's not all high value men who are douchebags and entitled. 
Um, some of them are chill. Hey, some of them might have that feminine energy this guy thinks that you need. And you'll have options. You know, she are a beautiful, smart young woman. You have options. Um, and podcasts like this want to make you feel like you don't have options. Okay. I get it. Uh, you know, these, this, the hosts have said, Oh God, I thought I, thought I touched my lip. I don't know why it's itchy, but these hosts have said that they, you know, they went their whole life feeling like I can't get any pee. I can't get any, you know, I can't get anyone to have intercourse with me. And then they realized, oh, okay, all these years girls have been playing me, so now I'm going to play them. So I get it. Like, it feels cool. It feels powerful to to tell women, ha-ha, for once, here, you're not powerful. We're powerful. he 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 I understand. However, ladies, don't buy into it. This is their little fantasy. You have options. Especially when you're young and beautiful, you have options. And if this woman is networking, she will see with her own eyes. That is the that is the key thing. You have to see it for yourself. You have to see with your own eyes. She will be able to see with her own eyes that she has options. And when she sees that she has options, oh, she's just gonna have she's gonna have a ball. She's going to do whatever she wants. She's going to, she's going to, she's going to, people like this guy who are trying to pressure her will mean nothing. People who are trying to say, no, no, the relationship that you say you want is not possible. These guys who are throwing a hissy fit, she, you won't have to listen to them ever again. Let me tell you. I am so happy that I found my partner when I did, because if I was still single, if I was still single in the midst of all this BS right now, I don't know what I would think. I would, there, it, it brings me back to when I was 15 and I was listening to Tom Likas, this super misogynistic uh, radio guy who said women are only good as sea dumpsters. Okay. And I was 15. Um, you know, right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a feminist, but I'm also 15 years old. Okay. So I'm heavily confused because I know in my heart, in my mind, what he's saying is wrong. I'm like, this is so bad. This is so misogynistic, but a part of me is young, naive, and just wanting to know the truth. And I'm wondering, is he right though? Is my only value to be a dumpster for some guy? You start, I started, I was doubting myself. I can't like, and these guys are so passionate too. They're like, they're so, they're so passionately trying to tell women that, you know, all these things, you, if you're over 30, you're just going to die single. If you're, if you want a man who makes over the average income, who makes more than 57 thousand dollars a year you're out of your mind if you're a single mother just forget it like these guys <laughs> they're so they're so like you hear the passion in this guy's voice this is just a woman who says uh i'm looking for a certain type of relationship hear hear how upset passionate i don't know what to call it he is they're speaking with this type of vitriol and that gets attention that, you know, that makes you want, that makes you feel like they're, they really believe what they're saying. Is there some truth to it? And no girls are stupid. Like it's way more nuanced than what they want to have you believe. Keep in mind, these guys are just trying to get laid. They're just trying to get laid and they've created a business out of helping guys feel good and making guys feel like they're going to get laid too. Okay. Keep that in mind. But when this woman starts networking and she gets into these circles and she learns like the reality of that circle, she can now live in that reality rather than having to deal with these guys who are trying to force her into their reality. The thing is, I hope that I'll be able to be successful in my life. Mm -hmm. 
and um and I'm, I mean, it's pretty shallow, but also I think that I think that looks are important and I take care of myself. Cool. So out of those three things that you mentioned, you said social circle, success and looks. The only thing that really re relevant to a high value man is going to be the looks. And the, so, dude, you're so you're so immature, dude. Where is she going to meet the high value man if she doesn't have the network? Where is she going to meet him? Dude, like, dude. I don't know. I mean, maybe that's how you pick up women. You go to the club, you just find whoever looks good and you grab them and you're like, yeah, come to my place and be on my podcast. You know, maybe that works for you, but for like everyone else, you meet people by who you spend time with, who you hang out with, who you know. That's how romantic relationships occur via proximity. So like, dude, like, where where is this businesswoman gonna meet dudes you know i mean i don't know if she goes to the club or whatever but that's not that's not the type of relationship that she's looking for that's not what she wants she doesn't want to meet guys like you i'm saying at the club because the host of the show that's what they do they go to the club they find girls they like or they go on instagram find some instagram baddie and entice her to be on the show um but yeah, it's like she needs to network so she can meet the guy. So that is also relevant. So looks and relevancy. You're saying nothing else. You're saying she's not working on what high value men want, but what else do they want? Like what else is there? Like, I mean, yeah, she needs to be able to like hold conversation, you know what I mean? And, and find like, you know, be able to identify what kind of personalities does she gel with and stuff like that. But in, in terms of getting the dude's attention, as long as she has the looks and she's in their proximity, she'll have their attention. So the fourth reality is that a lot of women such as yourself, they say, I'm working on myself to be more desirable to a man. But the things that you're working on, a man does not want. This man is going to be single. What else does a dude want? Like, I would love if you like gave actual advice. If you feel like this is not what a man wants, then tell us what a man wants. For the rest of his life, because he doesn't know what he actually wants in a woman. What he thinks that he wants in, the, in a woman is just through societal standards of what we perceive a man and woman in a relationship to be and what a relationship is. And he's just running through town, running through bitches, not respecting anyone, just being like, I know what I want. While he has this image of a woman that doesn't really exist. He wants a woman that is beautiful, subservient, working but doesn't you know always has time for it. this is an image he's conjured in his mind and he won't relent to dating anyone else one thing that i've learned is that like finding an actual partner is and, and like you've heard this before is like finding somebody that like fits you right they fill the holes in you that you didn't shut up they fill spaces shut. in you like emotions skills or abilities that you don't have and, and they bring that out in you and so when you've never experienced it or seen it from maybe a, a role model maybe you have a crush maybe somebody you dated like you'll never know what you as an individual actually need. Like, if I were to ask you right now, what are you looking for in a partner? You'd probably give the most generic answers of all time. I want somebody that's funny, smart, has a good job, like good, I don't know, just all this different shit. And then in reality, it's more like the things you're looking for are specific to you, okay? Like, right. you're horrible with clean- Exactly. That's why I feel like this guy's so immature. He, he doesn't understand nuance. I don't know, like maybe for him, I just don't believe that he's in a real monogamous relationship or even like a healthy polyamorous relationship. I don't buy it. I don't believe it. Uh, the hosts of the show are not. Um, the hosts of the show are single. So I'm just assuming this guy is single. The way he talks, he sounds single. He sounds like somebody who's immature, who has an immature understanding of relationships. He sounds like a guy who like just read a book. And it's like pretending to know what he's talking about. Just like when he started talking about business, it's like you don't know anything about business. If you're saying that um, starting the business with, you know, any fear of losing money uh, means you'll you'll never be successful in business or like the like the way he talks about things, he sounds like he went to a seminar he went to a seminar and he's repeating stuff that sounds good from the seminar. <laughs> That's what he sounds like. Um, because people who, who have some more maturity, they are able to speak to the more nuanced aspects of relationships. 
this guy talks like a guy who d- doesn't be in relationships. He talks like somebody who just goes to the club and picks up a woman. <laughs> That's what he sounds like to me. So if that is what you do, you just go to the club and pick up a woman, then yeah, all you can comprehend is the very superficial aspects of it. And you can't comprehend that it's a little bit more nuanced than just one of you has to has to be the team leader and the other of you, one of you is joining the team. It's a little bit more nuanced than that. I mean, it can't, it can, it can be like that if you want, but usually there's more dynamics at play. Meaning, then dating somebody who organizes things well and cares about that, that's a good match that's going to change something in you. Like, it's about filling those kind of things. And these generic things that we're looking for in a partner, I don't think they really, like, exist. Imagine a man saying, okay, I'm working on myself to be more desirable to women. Hey, you know what I'm doing? I'm learning how to wear fluorescent dresses. Is he, is he doing something that'll make him more desirable probably, to women? There's probably a woman out there who's yeah, like that. Um, I mean, if you're trying to say that what she's doing is comparable to that, it's not. Like, becoming successful for herself, that's fine. Like, it's not like high-value men are turned off by a woman who's successful. You know what I mean? (laughs) It's not a turn-off. Networking is essential. If she wants to get with a high-value man networking is essential um and up up maxing her looks i don't know what you call it look maxing upgrading her looks i mean i think she looks great already but you know whatever like she can make herself look however she wants to look you know that that works um you know like dude tell us what she should be working on it's easy to make that argument. So Let's be real. Is he doing video, something guys. that's making him more desirable to top tier women? Probably not. More, yes. Why are you asking stupid questions? Tell us what will make her desirable to top tier men. Because honestly, when he says top tier women, I don't trust his judgment of what top tier is at all. But anyway. By the way, I'm not disagreeing with you on most of your points. I know, of course not. I know. So the re- I just want to make that a point. Like, I'm, we, we understand. We understand. Yeah. I know. She has to say that because. He is like, this was a complete waste of her time. (laughs) And she's like, hope she's like, maybe he's coming for me because he feels like I offended him. Like this woman, I really respect. Actually, I want to find her Instagram. I really respect her. Like she's really giving him the benefit of the doubt and really trying to understand where he's coming from. Girl, he's just, he's just a fake guru, like whatever. Yeah. Don't worry, don't worry about the topic. It's just you and me talking right now. That's fine. I'm not so, so the point I'm trying to make is that when women say I'm working on myself, mm-hmm. a lot of times they're not working on themselves in a way that's going to make them You more- are repeating yourself. Tell us the, the ways that will make them more desirable, dude. Like give actual advice. Desirable to, to other men. So to the point of, yes, our podcast, we're yeah, telling men to do things that tangibly, to and fit. Mm-hmm. We're telling Yo, men to do- he loves to talk. Tell, dude. Man, he's getting on my damn nerves. I don't know what they would do if I they would kick me off the show if I was there. I'd be like, dude, can you tell us then? <laughs> do things tangibly that make them more desirable to women. But unfortunately, what you're working on and what a lot of why are you dude, he's literally he's literally getting on my nerves. He's l- repeating himself like for the fifth time. And please don't listen to this podcast. Can you fucking imagine you start dating a guy? What the and- <laughs> You're on his laptop one day and you see the Fresh and Fit page and every single video has been watched to completion on YouTube. A lot of women work on are things that would not make you attractive to men. Okay, so I will say, like, I don't think that my end goal is to be attractive to men. My- exactly. That's the other problem. She never said she's doing... Dude, the dude doesn't listen. Oh my freaking God, he doesn't listen. She said that she is working on herself... And she hopes to find somebody who deserves that next level of her. She didn't say she's doing all of this to be like, she didn't say that's her end goal. In fact, when it comes to being attractive to men, she said she hopes. She didn't say that's her end goal. She said she just hopes she finds someone deserving. You don't listen, my guy. It's very annoying. Well, I mean, he doesn't feel like he needs to listen, whatever. My end goal is to work on myself so that I have a higher value as a person in, in my life. I'm- right. She wants to be a high value person. 
and she hopes to find a man who's deserving of the high value she is as a person. You don't listen, dude. And, and okay, if it's so unfortunate that she's not working on things that guys care about, then, then tell her what she should work on then. Like you want to persuade her to your side of thinking, then tell her the things. I'm happier. Yeah. Right. Write the video oh. right now. All right. Oh, you want to know what my fear is? Okay. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, right. Well, anyways, that's the end of their, that's the end of their thing. God, they're so cheesy. Um, yo, we've been here for an hour and a half. So that just made my blood. That was so frustrating and irritating. Whenever I watch something that that's irritating, I have I just I'm like, listen, I can't suffer in silence. I can all suffer by myself now. Why not you suffer with me? We are friends now. Come now. You vibe with me. If you're vibing, you are subscribing. That means when I suffer, you suffer as well. <laughs> but I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. <clears throat> If you have nothing else to say, that's fine. Still leave a comment. Just leave a paw print emoji. So we know you made it all the way to the end. Yes, what's up, man? I cannot wait to get to the point where I actually edit my videos. It'll happen one day. I know it will. Um, experimenting with makeup. I'm trying to learn how to do no makeup makeup. You know what I mean? I went to Sephora and Ulta. And, you know. I'm trying to improve my collection. You know, I'm trying to audition for these professional cheerleading teams. So, you know, your makeup needs to look good. You need to look good. Like, if you can look like Barbie, you know, that's good. <clears throat> Dang, I need to drink water. Because I've been talking for an hour and a half. Um, So I thought, you know, this thing irritated me. I'm trying on makeup anyway. And the type of undesirable audience that this video might attract, the type of people who, who will want to know my relationship status, they will want to see me wearing makeup. I mean, girl, like what you're imagining, yes. Like the type, when I say the undesirable crowd this video might attract, whoever and whatever you're imagining, yes. So I thought, why not? But then again, we never know with these videos. You literally never know with these videos. It's a hit or miss, especially with a channel like mine where I talk about whatever I want, whenever I want. But I appreciate you because you've been here for over 90 minutes. You could have been watching a movie. Like you could have been watching. You could have been on your third rewatch of Encanto. OMG, the last episode of Euphoria is tomorrow. What time is it? It's 4 a.m. Oh, my God. I didn't know I stayed up this late. Oh, my God. I wasn't trying to stay up late. I wasn't trying to stay up late. I'm so sorry, body. I'm so sorry to my body. I didn't mean it. I didn't. I wasn't trying to stay up late. But we did. And it's now Sunday. And in a few hours, the euphoria finale is coming on. And no, I will. I will. I will. I will come back on here. I will come back on here to give my take on the Euphoria finale. Oh my God. Thank you guys. I appreciate you. I respond to comments now. I don't just heart. I actually respond. So let me know you were here. Until next time, much love, much luck. Peace out. Thank you. Bye.